Film Guy recaps here, don't forget to like and subscribe. The film opens as a man named Morris is seen working late in his office. Suddenly, he starts to feel sharp pain in his chest. When the pain becomes more severe, Morris goes to grab some water. He subsequently has a heart attack and passes away while falling to the ground. Then, we see Mr. Lockhart, who is riding a train to work. He is a conservative businessman with a general disregard for other people. Hank Green, Hollis, and Wilson, the senior executives of Lockhart's financing firm, are seen accompanying him to the conference. They look over a letter that was issued by Roland Pembroke, the company's CEO. He was only intended to spend two weeks away in a spa in the Swiss Alps. Pembroke appears to have experienced some type of breakdown, as the message suggests, and this has prolonged his time at the rehabilitation center. The group then confronts Lockhart on his unlawful behavior. Green demonstrates to Lockhart an unlawful document he submitted that is currently the subject of an SEC investigation. If Lockhart doesn't want to be punished for his unlawful deeds, he must go to the Swiss Alps and bring Pembroke back. In a flashback, Lockhart is shown paying his mother a visit at a retirement community. She has a little music box with a ballerina inside who, according to her, is dreaming but is unaware that she is. Before he leaves, Lockhart's mother passes away and is cremated but he kept the ballerina. Lockhart rides in a cab with Enrico when he arrives in Switzerland. When questioned, Lockhart replies that he only has to pick someone up from the spa before they can continue talking. A peasant throws a drink at the automobile as it ascends the slope to the spa. Enrico reveals that the peasants and the inhabitants of the hill have a troubled past. There is a legend about a nobleman who wed his sister in order to preserve his dynasty. The villagers revolted and burned the baron's sister alive after the baron started conducting tests on them and finding out that she was infertile. Enrico adds that the spa has been there for at least 2,500 years. At the spa, Lockhart shows up. He drives inside and sees that everyone appears to be at ease. Enrico is instructed to wait until Lockhart enters. However, the strange receptionist informs him that visiting hours have just ended when he enters the building. He requests to meet the boss since Pembroke is essential for him to return. He enters and greets the manager after noticing there is no reception. He says that he needs to return Pembroke as he peers at the odd images hanging on the wall. The management says they are unable to permit a patient to depart. Lockhart is astounded by how many people go great distances merely to use water to heal themselves. Lockhart is also given the same water by the management. With nothing more he can do, Lockhart sips the water and departs. Since he has no service on the hill, Lockhart instructs Enrico to drive him to a hotel where he may make a call. Lockhart then departs with Enrico. In another flashback, a young Lockhart and his father are shown riding in a car. On a rainy day, his father was driving across a bridge when he heard on the radio that the stock market had crashed and that many jobs had been lost. He stops his vehicle and moves towards the bridge's edge. Lockhart saw his father leave the boy in the car and leap. A deer darts into the road while you're driving to the motel from the woods. After hitting the deer, Enrico's car veers off the road and into a ditch as the animal becomes impaled on the windscreen. Three days later, Lockhart awakens in a spa room. He meets Dr. Heinrich Vollmer, the spa's director, who informs him that the accident left him with a shattered leg. Vollmer claims to have informed Green of the incident. During his visit, he advises Lockhart to try some of the spa's services. He is kept in a room where he may hear the rattling of the toilet handle on its own. When Lockhart drinks some water, he discovers a parasitic organism floating in the cup. Lockhart meets Victoria Watkins, Frank Hill, and Ron Nair, three patients. Crossword puzzles are particularly appealing to Watkins. The three of them appear to be very satisfied with their care. Then Hannah, a young lady who saw herself as an exceptional case, is introduced to Lockhart. Volmer and other staff personnel are routinely observed taking vitamin drops from a blue bottle with her as well as a number of other patients. Lockhart receives medical attention inside a tank of water. The orderly attending to Lockhart becomes sidetracked as the water fills up. He becomes anxious as the eels begin to fill the aquarium. An eel pulls Lockhart's breathing tube out as he stands up. Before he completely drowns, he manages to get the tank to open and let the water out. When he brings up the barren tale to Lockhart, Watkins tells her the tale. She says that after the locals set fire to his castle, the spa was constructed on its charred ruins. The infant reportedly survived being taken out of the barren sister's womb and dumped into an aquifer, according to Watkins. She also says that she is unsure. Hannah agrees to ride his bike into town in exchange for Lockhart giving her his ballerina figurine. Together, they travel and halt at a nearby pub. Enrico, who survived the collision and was granted a new automobile with the money the spa provided him, is encountered by Lockhart as he buys himself and Hannah Drin. Hannah stays to dance alone in front of the other customers while listening to music. 
a mute youngster who is tending the castle fire is in a barn when Lockhart stumbles upon it. Peter, his father, comes up to Lockhart. Lockhart inquires about the origins of the spa. Peter then visits a cow that is sick and about to pass away. When he opens the cow's tummy, a stillborn calf and some eels fall out. Hannah is dancing close to a punk when Lockhart rejoins her at the bar. When Lockhart tries to remove him from her, the punk strikes him. Volmer, who is on his way to pick up Lockhart and Hannah, intervenes to save him. Lockhart's tooth then gets loose and he pulls it out by himself. He gives it to a member of staff, who submerges it in water. Lockhart then departs to carry on his investigation. As he passes through numerous wings, he slips by the personnel. He finds a room with other patients, including Pembroke, who appears to be dead and is kept in water tanks. A pool with dead bodies thrown in it and fed to eels is also discovered by him in an underground place. Mrs. Watkins just so happens to be one of those deceased bodies. The caretaker discovers Lockhart, Volmer, and another employee as they attempt to return to their rooms. Lockhart brings up his teeth problem. A drill is driven into his front teeth as he is led into a room and restrained. Lockhart leaves the spa and goes into the city to inform a policeman about Volmer's research. Volmer and a member of his staff show up to return Lockhart. Lockhart talks about the tanks and his experience in Pembroke. In support of Volmer's assertions that Lockhart threatened Pembroke and said he would take him back to New York using force if necessary, Pembroke then reappears alive and well. Lockhart is forced to bring Volmer back. Following several therapies, Lockhart begins to behave and think like Pembroke in that he feels ill and must wait for a cure. While composing a letter to his bosses, he experiences a flash of insight and realizes that no man can unsee the truth. Meanwhile, Hannah is swimming and getting her first period. Eels begin to swim closer, but soon they form a complete circle around her. Lockhart then breaks a glass and cuts open his cast with a shard, revealing that his leg was never injured. He bolts from his room and runs into Hannah. She is terrified and punches Lockhart in the face as he attempts to rescue her. Hannah dashes into a room where Volmer, the staff, and several patients are enjoying supper. Lockhart rushes in and begins telling everyone that Volmer is a liar and is to blame for everyone becoming sick from whatever is in the water. It is also to blame for their teeth falling out as a side effect. Patients begin to stand, which Lockhart believes is in favor of him, but they are all working against him as they approach him and declare that they are ill. They all swarm around Lockhart until he collapses. Lockhart awakens in a room in which he is motionless. Volmer inserts a tube down his throat and injects the eel-filled liquid into his body, where the eels filter out the vitamins that Volmer requires all of his patients to ingest. Lockhart has his teeth corrected and looks to be transformed in the same way that the other patients are, trapped in the idea that he is ill. Volmer hosts a celebration for the patients and workers that night. He even buys Hannah a new outfit for the event. Lockhart begins to come to his senses in his chamber as he recalls what Watkins told him about the Baron. He discovers a photograph shot some time after the fire that allegedly killed the Baron. He also discovers a strange message with the words, she doesn't know, there. Lockhart then interrupts the image and zooms in on one man's face with a glass. The man appears to have bandages covering his entire face. It is now clear that the Baron did not perish in the fire. He cracks the frame and reveals the picture's concealed portion. The bandaged man is clutching the hand of a small child, who looks to be Hannah. Hannah is led into a room near the transfusion wing by Volmer. He keeps a photograph of his sister, who was also Hannah's mother, there. Volmer binds Hannah to the bed and prepares to perform the unimaginable. Lockhart escapes his chamber and meets the caretaker, who assaults him until Lockhart forces steam to blast in his face before bludgeoning him to death. Lockhart then locates Volmer and rescues Hannah. Lockhart and Volmer battle, and Volmer tears the skin off his face, revealing himself to be the horribly scarred Baron. For far over a century, the vitamins have kept him and Hannah alive. Lockhart lures Volmer into a trap where he drops a large amount of fuel, causing Lockhart to start a fire. Volmer catches fire and then sets fire to the curtains in an attempt to put it out. The flames subsequently spread to the remainder of the fortress. Lockhart attempts to liberate Hannah, but is attacked by Volmer. Volmer gets Lockhart close to the eel pool and prepares to murder him, but Hannah grabs a shovel and throws it down into Volmer's skull. He falls backwards into the water and becomes eel food. Lockhart and Hannah leave the burning castle as the patients and staff depart. They steal Hannah's bike and flee. They are stopped on the road by an automobile. Green, Hollis, and Wilson emerge, instructing Lockhart to get inside the car. When they inquire about Pembroke, Lockhart informs them that he has left. They tell him to come back in, but he refuses. Hollis inquires as to what is wrong with Lockhart. Lockhart says he is feeling much better. With an evil smirk on Lockhart's face, 
he and Hannah continue riding out into the darkness. Here, this movie ends. To watch more awesome and thought-provoking movie recaps, please subscribe to Film Guy Recaps. Don't forget to like this video and tell us in the comments which movie you want to see next. Goodbye for now.